Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I.B. DeGangie doing political commentary for the media speaks. And uh, I got an interesting comment. I always like to address comments at the beginning of the shows. Uh, someone noticed that the show was a half hour long. By all means, that's why they're named the way they are. If you're interested, for instance, in the Greek news, it's coming up after the first three stories, which is how the show gets named the way it does. Um, also, um, so I'm, I'm trying to find ways to give different, different camera angles to everyone and whatnot because it has been brought to my attention that I'm a guy talking into a camera for a half hour. I never really intended for myself to be stared at. I don't care for a half hour, but I mean, how beautiful is it? Eh, don't answer that. My point is, I don't know, do what you do throughout the day. Do what you do when Rush is on. Do what you do when Alex Jones is on. I mean, do you sit there and watch Alex Jones or do you listen to him? I think I, I mean, his, his face is on there. I don't know. It's very strange. But yeah, do what you do when, when it comes to your information. Leave comments, hop in, whatever. And by all means, if you think I'm beautiful, then watch away. It doesn't really matter. Um, listen to this. The last days of normal life in America. And it says, these are the last days of normal. I'm going to get serious for a minute, not to kill the uh, jovial mood that we started with. How many of you just feel it? You, you just feel it. Something isn't right. I don't care if you're old. I don't care if you're young. I don't care what kind of music you listen to or what color you are. You feel it, don't you? There is something wrong. To be a little more grim, if it's possible, there are some very bad things on the way. You just, I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to pontificate as to whether or not it could be a, a, a nuclear issue, an economic crash, um, a combination of things. I, I don't know, but it's bad, um, very, very bad. And for those of you that like the commentary side of this show, you're gonna like the uh, you're gonna like this quite a bit because uh, Michael Snyder has written an amazing article here at the end of the American Dream, and I'm gonna go ahead and read it to you. I'm probably gonna read you most of it, and I'm gonna give you commentary about it, and um, you're gonna to want to share. This is gonna be one of the views you probably want to share. If you have got family and friends that you would like to visit before things start getting really crazy, you should do so within the next couple of months because these are the last days of normal life in America. The website where I have posted this article is called The End of the American Dream, but perhaps I should have entitled it The End of America because that is essentially what we are heading for. The debt-fueled prosperity that so many of us take for granted is about to come to a screeching halt, and we are about to enter the hardest times that any of us have ever known. And I'm not just talking about economics, either. Based on all the intel and information that I have gathered, we are about to enter a perfect storm that is going to shake this country in just about every possible way that it can be shaken. So I hope that you will truly savor this summer. Days like this will not come around again anytime soon. How many of you don't think that he's a doomsayer? How many of you really feel this way? I was just telling uh, Christelle the other day, and I ended up getting called into work, oddly enough, uh, that we needed to go do something and enjoy the summer. I, I, hard to pinpoint why it's just a bad feeling. It says, have you ever known someone that lived a seemingly charmed life even though the individual made foolish decision after foolish decision? In the end, reality always catches up with people like that. I don't know if I necessarily find that to be true. A lot of times they end up millionaires, and no matter what they do, uh, it seems like the whole world is blind to their stupidity, in my opinion. That's just what my experience has taught me. Um, it says, in so many ways, we have been living a charmed life as a nation, even though we have been making incredibly foolish decisions for decades. We have cursed ourselves over and over again, and just about every form of evil that you can possibly imagine is exploding all around us. How many of you have seen it? As a nation, we now stand for just about everything that is foul, disgusting, and wicked, and the rest of the world is absolutely horrified by what has happened to us. Once upon a time, we were one of the most loved nations on the entire planet. 
Now, we are one of the most hated. The things that we have been doing to ourselves and to other countries are about to catch up with us in a major way. We thought that we were getting away with everything, he writes, that we were doing, but that was never the case. When you do evil, there is always a price to pay. Over the next few weeks, some very strange things have begun to happen. Over the past few weeks, excuse me. In the months ahead, we are going to see some more unusual events, and there's links to uh, what he thinks those will be. To be honest, this is just a tip of the iceberg, and for now, you are going to have to distrust me on this one. And he says, if his tone sounds ominous, he wants it to. He said, um, I've often written about the global elite and how they like to go about doing things. Throughout history, they have always liked to create order out of chaos. In other words, they will often purposefully create a crisis in order to push through things that they would not be able to accomplish during normal times. That's how we got the Patriot Act. It says, uh, right now there are major things going on behind the scenes and all of our comfortable little lives are about to get shaken up big time. He says, I believe that we are about to enter one of those periods of time. The problems that we are about to experience are going to be used to justify radical solutions that will not further the overall agenda that will further the overall agenda of the elite. But because we will be in the middle of an emergency, a lot of people will choose to go along with these solutions. And that's going to be dreadful, friends. That's going to be absolutely dreadful. That's how we've ended up with uh, a condition where the Fourth Amendment doesn't even really exist anymore. So sadly, most people don't understand how the world works because they are so consumed with other things. We live in a society that is absolutely addicted to entertainment. And, uh, again, I'm, I'm a DJ for a living. I have no problem with entertainment. I like to watch uh, movies or something before I go to sleep that doesn't have anything to do with this. But that's not what he's talking about here. He's not talking about someone that enjoys um, some entertainment. He's talking about the kind of people that wanted to ban the First Amendment because Beyonce told them to in a mock interview done by... Um, uh, Mark Dice. Just recently, I wrote about how the average American spends more than 10 hours a day plugged into some form of media. Well, I do, but a lot of it's research for the show and my job, so I don't know if that counts. I have to eat. It says, if we are not watching television, we are listening to the radio, going to the movies, playing video games, me messing with our smartphones, and spending endless hours on the internet. I will say this, there are people who are so addicted to their phone that in a group of people, it's almost like they're not even there. There are people that I hardly have any memories of them at all, joining in conversations with groups of people because they're so addicted to their phone, ticking away at these games and stuff. And it, I, and I can't be the only one. Are there other people out there that have this and that see this going on around them? says more than 90% of the programming that we are fed through these devices is produced by just six, six absolutely gigantic media corporations. I told you we were going to do some um, <clears throat> commentary today. And we're going to do some reading. Um, do you understand that the games that you're taking on, the music that's on the radio, particularly uh, newer music, and then again, they've bought the older music too, um... They, the purchase to back catalogs, I mean. The TV shows, the movies, everything that you're getting is given to you by six gigantic corporations. That's it. Do you want to know why music sounds exactly the same? Whether it's, uh, and it does it for every genre. Do you want to know why that is? Why, why do you know 10 people down the street that rap better than Drake? And yet, Drake has a record deal. Do you ever wonder why that is? It's been set up to be able to sell things quickly. And when you live in a country that has no grasp of what music even is, I don't even know that they teach music to any degree anymore. Nobody knows song structure. Nobody knows anything. Then you can go ahead and throw some mindless, brainless, talentless person like Nicki Minaj onto the, the scene give her an auto-tune and a drum machine, and America thinks that she has talent. Well, that wouldn't happen if all of the media wasn't owned by six huge corporations. The fact that we have that 
is what is blocking other bands out from ever getting signed. That's why you can't you can't sell a book these days. I've I've finished novels. You can't even get them read. Why? Because everything is sold to the lowest denominator for the highest dollar. A lot of people can't read anything higher than a, a third or fourth grade reading level anymore in this country. And we all know that uh, the average song on the radio has a third grade reading level. Well, when you start to lose the more creative and talented among the society, then society as a whole suffers. It says, who controls the gigantic media corporations? The elite do. You notice no musicians, nothing like that. They don't. Have you noticed that the mainstream media loves to divide us? Today, Americans are more divided than ever, it seems. Think about that, even in the 60s, when all the uh, uprisings were happening. It says, our news broadcast endlessly fixate on black versus white or male versus female, liberal versus conservative, rich versus poor, etc., etc. Americans are extremely angry and frustrated at this point, but most of our anger and frustration is directed, is directed at one another. How can we ever hope to come up with any solutions for our nation if we spend so much time hating our fellow citizens? But that is just how the elite like it. They love to play to divide and conquer, for if we were united, we would be far more difficult to manipulate. And I've said forever, the way you get out of things like uh, ridiculous traffic laws, I've said it a million times, I've gotten away from saying it lately, and I thought today I need to start mentioning it again. You get mass refusal. Say you get 20,000 people in one city, maybe that's only got 50,000 people working. 20,000 people that say, we're not going to pay our tickets. We're not going to get insurance. We're not going to buy driver's licenses. We're not going to pay fines. You find us, we're just going to keep driving. Guess what? A town with 50,000 people populated working, they can't afford to arrest everyone. They're only going to arrest the ones who deserve it, the ones who were sloshed when they were driving, um, the ones who uh, you know, have caused some kinds of problem to society. They will go to jail, and the rest of you will be free. That is how you stop things like this. And they don't want that kind of mindset coming out because we'll defeat them in a matter of months. So they do the things that I'm uh, doing commentary on now. It says, the truth is most Americans deeply reject the values and principles that the founders of this country once held so dear. Makes sense. It said, if we did find a way to come together, what values and principles would we use to rebuild the nation? He writes that he and his wife believe the greatest chapters of their lives lie ahead of them, but he is not so optimistic for the states. Um, I'll tell you what. I don't know. I'm, I'm about to get married, and I don't know that uh, Christelle and I are probably going to have a better future than we have now. Um, if we have an economic crash, it would be huge, hugely substantial. And uh, I, I spent almost all of my adult life poor prior to the last uh, eight or nine years. And it's not something I look forward to returning to. Um, I work in a DJ as a, a strip club DJ often. And you know what? You could say whatever you want about it, but it's honest money. I don't have to hurt anybody, steal anybody, do anything illegal. Uh, I don't have to force anybody to do anything they're not doing by their own free will or at least due to situations beyond my control. Um, when I was had an honest job driving cab, I used to have to do all kinds of nefarious things just to be able to afford a 99-cent cheeseburger. And I'm not kidding. I'm not paraphrasing. I mean, it was that bad. Um, I would have to take people to buy drugs from known crack houses. I would have to run prostitutes. God only knows how many times somebody may have gotten AIDS because I had to do my job. Yeah, I don't have to do things like that anymore, and I'm not poor. So, I mean, I think what a lot of people miss is that it's only one step of way. For instance, if, uh, if, an, if the, and I would, I would argue that it is already happening. If the economic crash was to happen now, the very first place people are going to cut out are places like where I work. And uh, I don't think very many people see the writing on the wall here, which is why I like to go ahead and describe it. That's why I've spent 15 minutes on it here. It says, perhaps you are reading this and you have come to the conclusion that I am irrationally negative. If so, you are probably spending too much time plugged into the propaganda matrix that I described above. 
The establishment wants you to believe that everything is going to be just fine and that these days are, and, and that the best days of this world of ones lying ahead. If you think that I am wrong, I challenge you to bookmark this page. Then after some time has passed, come back and re revisit what I had to say. It says, you'll be shocked. The last half of 2015 is going to represent a major turning point, and we are moving into hard times, unlike anything that America has ever seen before. And uh, you're going to want to follow the link about the, uh, the timing, historically, of the turning point that he's referring to. It says, unfortunately, most of the sheep are going to be completely blindsided by what is coming. It says, the good news is that once the shaking starts, many of these sheep will awaken. What happens then? Well, who are the sheep will turn to for answers? I know I spent some time on that, friends, but I thought it was more than worth it. Make sure you let me know what you thought of that uh, segment. And we're going to get to Greece and everything else. Um... This here brought to you by StickerJunkie.com. Make sure if you're going to get stickers made, you go to StickerJunkie.com. Let David Lake know you heard about it on the correct views. You'll get a discount if you do that. Firstlook.org, The Intercept. Spying on the Internet is orders of magnitude more invasive than metaphone data. And it says, um, it, it goes on here to say why. <clears throat> this was uh, X. Key score. It's a secret program that converts all data that it can see on the web into searchable web pages where loaded, files downloaded, forms submitted, emails and attachments sent, porn videos watched, TV news streamed, and advertisements loaded. And it demonstrates how internet traffic can be more sensitive than phone calls. Do you realize what that could be used for? Let's say that, um, and I, I, I'm not going to condemn. The, the individual, and there is a hypothetical individual that I'm describing. I'm not condemning the uh, what I'm saying. I'm using it as an analogy. Let's say you have a, uh, a, a politician who is a very good politician, loyal to his wife, and he looks up gay porn. Maybe his wife even knows he looks up gay porn. Um, and you guys, I think you guys already know what politician I'm alluding to because it happened to him. Um, people turned that in. It wasn't like he dropped his phone at the airport. And look, he looks like gay porn. Somebody used things like this against that person and said, look at this, and then smeared him. What if you are a pastor in a church and you and your wife are going through a divorce. Do you want all of that to be leaked to anybody at any time for any reason, the specifics of the divorce? That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about that kind of spying here. It says, uh, the outrage over bulk collection of our phone, <coughs> excuse me, metadata makes sense. Metadata is private. Americans call suicide prevention hotlines, HIV testing services, phone sex services, advocacy groups for gun rights and for abortion rights, and uh, the people they're having affairs with. We use the phone to schedule <coughs> job interviews without letting our current employer know. And we manage long-distance relationships. Most of us at one point or another have spent long hours on the telephone discuss discussing the most intimate details of our lives. There is an American alive today who didn't grow up with at least some access to a telephone, and Americans understand this well. Excuse me, thirsty. Do you understand what this is, that X keystroke? Um, again, look it up if you don't know what it is. It allows mass spying on you, and even if the government isn't doing something nefarious with it, they can use it to take out your favorite politician for whatever sin he or she has. And believe me, they have them just like we do. They do. You might be surprised to know that uh, they're not saints. Nope, they're not. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they're a bad person. So who's your favorite politician? Do you want uh, mass spying happening so they can be bounced out of office and replaced by your least favorite politician? Because usually the, uh, the exact opposite wins an election when something like that happens. Do you want all of your private information out there? Do you think you may ever work in a field? Maybe you want to, maybe you want to, uh, what's a good example? Uh, bomb squad. You want to work on the bomb squad. 
Yeah, well, you know, 15 years ago, you called a suicide prevention line. I don't think you're stable enough. Nope, you can't have the job. That's the kind of thing that could happen here, and that's a slippery slope, friends. It's a very, very slippery slope. Um, before we get into the grease stuff, I had to do this. Um, why were plans for a 2.5 mile an anomalizing Wi-Fi extender proxy ham killed? This is vice.com. This thing is complicated as hell, but what it is, is it's a way to completely be anonymous on the net and greatly extend the range that you are able to both receive and uh, accompany the internet on. And it made it so that you were absolutely anonymous. Well, this idiot, two weeks ago, Security, ben Security Benjamin Caudill unveiled a new cheap anomalizing device called proxy ham now listen to what this idiot did he damn near got the dumb D of the day I mean absolutely stupid listen to this the device allowed its operator connect to connect to a Wi-Fi network up to 2.5 miles away detaching the user from the IP address so now your IP address can't be proven that's beautiful and giving him or her an extra layer of anomalization online Caudill was expected to release the code for ProxyHam, as well as show off the prototype at the hacking conference DEF CON in Las Vegas next month. Why didn't the greedy, there's the word, greedy, dumbass, just release the damn thing without telling anybody that he was going to do it? Why didn't he just drop it in 20 different places without telling anyone? Because he was hoping to somehow make money off. And he wasn't really... Uh, people are talking about this man like he's the white knight in shining freaking armor. The man could have dropped this out here and we would be using it tomorrow. Instead, he somehow wanted the praise and the glory that came with dropping it. And what he did was lost it. Over the weekend, due to mysterious circumstances, yeah, I bet, the talk at DEF CON got canceled and the development of Proxy Ham was shuttered. Shuttered. To make matters even murkier, Caudill said he is unable to talk about what happened, suggesting that he might have been pressured to kill Proxy Ham. That's what you get! That's what you get for not just putting it online, you greedy bastard! Effective immediately, they said he was going to give it away anyway. What, you wanted trumpets to play fanfare for you? Effective immediately, we are halting further development of Proxy Ham and will not be releasing any further details or source of the device. Caudill's firm, Rhino Security Labs, tweeted late on Friday, Go to hell! The firm added that proxy ham prototypes that have already been built will be disposed of and no longer be made available at DEF CON. I hope someone craps in his mouth. I'm so angry right now. I reached out to Caudill via email, but he declined to provide any comment and apologized, which could mean he was under a gag order and he couldn't talk about what... I hope I know what, I hope it gags him too. Perhaps law enforcement authorities forced him to stop working on Proxy Ham. Well, maybe if you hadn't told everybody about how cool you were, maybe if you would have just dropped the damn thing, it would have been a benefit to everybody, you jerk. Oh, my God. Uh, your friends, you're listening to the correct views. Going to get into the Greek update. All things Greece. Everybody's talking about Greece. Is it a reason to buy gold, silver, and platinum? Yes, but not with the urgency that it was before. But... Oh, it's a nightmare. Brought to you by Mike McLaughlin. Uh, make sure you look up um, M A M A C L A H E L I N. Look him up. Let him know you heard about him on The Correct Views. Political commentary, um, poetry, books, novels, you name it, he writes it. Greek PM Tsipras faces party revolt over ballot deal. Do you guys understand what happened in Greece? Because if not, I'm going to paraphrase it for you real quick. In January, the people of Greece overwhelmingly elected this idiot to not take any more bailout money with ridiculous demands for austerity. What's austerity mean? Less payment, less benefits, less uh, infrastructure, blah, 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 blah. Um, and, and austerity means you get less of what you need. Rather than any more European Union austerity, they said to tell the EU and Germany to go to hell. The Germany leads the EU, for those of you that don't know. Go to hell. We are Greek. We don't need to be European. 
Well, the man who promised not to sell them down the river sold them down the river with a deal that is worse than the one that they elected him to stop. This has to be the greatest betrayal in the last, uh, since World War II, when Hitler betrayed, um, what's his name, in England, that tried to uh, uh, pacify the nutcase. Greece left-wing Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras, jerk, betrayer, Judas, we're going to call him Judas, faces a showdown with rebels in his own party on Tuesday, furious at his capitulation to German demands for one of the most sweeping austerity, pack austerity packages ever demanded of the Eurozone government. What's that mean? You tune into the correct views for me to paraphrase, right? Not only did he not do what they elected him to do, he gave them one of the worst deals in the entire history of the Eurozone. Hey, what? It'll be, it'll be like the Bush family. His career still won't be over. Are they, are they that stupid in Europe, too? Just hours after the deal that saw Greece, who should have told uh, Germany to go and F themselves and left the EU, surrender much of its sovereignty, that is its ability to rule itself, to outside supervision in return for agreeing to talks on a $95 billion bailout, that's the equivalent, 86 billion euros, and he doubts that we are already emerging about whether Tsipras, Judas, would still be able to hold his government together. I hope they riot in the streets. It says the terms imposed by, no, no, I don't mean burn anything down and hurt each other, I mean march in droves. The terms imposed by international lenders led by Germany in all night talks in an emergency summit obliged Tsipras, Judas, to abandon promises of ending austerity. Instead, he must pass legislation to cut pensions. That is, people were promised this money when they worked, and now he wants you know, they want you to lie. We're going to give you X amount of, X, X amount of dollars uh, for the rest of your life when you put in your 30 years. So you put in your 30 years and find out you're not getting XX. You're only getting X. Sucks to be you. Die. Uh, they want an increased value-added tax, which is cr crippling to any uh, country. Something equivalent to that was in the Versailles Treaty, which is one of the things that angered the people of Germany so badly that they elected Adolf Hitler because they weren't thinking in terms of social. They were just trying to, if, to eat, to get the government uh, to stop paying all their money away to other nations as reparations for World War I. So now Germany, who saw this happen to them, they saw the Weimar Republic happen to them, now Germany is doing it to Greece. It says they want the Greeks to clamp down on collecting bargaining agreements so you can't even, you know, try to make money for your business and put in place quasi-automatic spending constraints. In addition, it goes on, he must set 50 billion euros of public sector assets, the people's money, aside to be sold off under the supervision of foreign lenders and get the whole package through Parliament by Wednesday. I hope that they're going to hang him, and if they don't, I don't know why. What are they, maybe they just don't have any rope. Uh, Judas himself elected five months ago to end five years of suffocating austerity, said he had fought a tough battle and averted the plan for financial stang strangulation. But to get the accord through Parliament by Wednesday's deadline, he will have to rely on votes from the pro-European opposition parties, raising big questions over the future of his government and opening the prospect for snap elections. They need to run him out of office and exile him from the country. Left-wing rebels in the ruling Syriza party and his junior coalition partner, the right-wing independent Greeks party, indicated that they would not tear up election pledges that brought them to power in January. We could not agree to that. Independent Greeks leader Penas Kaminos told reporters after meeting Cyprus, Judas, in a parliamentary democracy, there are rules and we uphold them. A meeting at the Syriza parliamentary group on Tuesday morning could see energy ministers Pangaloitis Laferizanis, it's all Greek to me, and Deputy Labor Minister Demetrius Stratolis sacked over their opposition to the ballot. So, ballot. so what they did is absolutely stabbed the people of Greece in the back 
and gave them a worse deal than the deal that they already didn't want. And they said that he hadn't been humiliated. It was a compromise, and there were no winners and losers, Junker said, when asked if uh, Greek was, Greece was humiliated. I don't think the Greek people have been humiliated. No, no, not a bit. Um, what do you say to that, friends? Uh, you think it can't happen here? It's already happening here. Gr Greece is a smaller country. It's just happening faster there. You can see it happening here. Uh, more Greek news. The problem with Greece is not a tragedy. It is a lie. This is from uh, John Porger. A historic betrayal has consumed Greece. Having set aside the mandate of the Greek electorate, that means what he was elected to do, the Syriza government has willfully ignored last week's landslide no vote and secretly agreed a raft of repressive imp impoverishing measures in return for a bailout that means sinister foreign control and a warning to the world. Prime Minister, of course, Judas, Alexis Sepris, has pushed through a parliament a proposal to cut at least 13 billion euros from the public purse. 4 billion euros more than the austerity figure that was rejected overwhelmingly by a majority of the Greek population on July the 5th. So on July the 5th, they said no to the first one, which was $9 billion. So instead, Judas gets them $13 billion in the hole. They reportedly include 50% increase in health care for pensioners, so your sick people are going to be hurting more, especially the elderly. Almost 40% of whom already live in poverty. Deep cuts in public sector wages. That means uh, uh, everybody's going to be making nothing while the price of everything goes through the roof. The complete privatization of public facilities. In other words, they're going to take their airports and their ports and raise the value-added tax to 23%, now applied to the Greek islands where people struggle even to eke out a living. They are going to see a rise of violence and people fighting against this in Greece such as you have never seen. It says, for six months, Cyprus, Judas, and the recently discarded finance minister, Yanis Varoufakis, shuddered between Athens and Brussels, Berlin, and other centers of European power. And basically, they were preached to by the other nations uh, that have uh, loan shark this poor nation to death. The, the cradle of Western democracy has been uh, a socialist hellhole forever now. Even the Pope referred to it as the dung of the devil, meaning the European Union. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's what they've done to Greece. That's what you're seeing here. It says the leaders of Syriza and the revolutionaries of a kind, but their revolution is the perverse familiar apparition of social, democratic, and parliamentary movements by liberals groomed to comply with neoliberal drivel. In other words, lie to the people, stab them in the back, and sell their country down the line. The uh, last thing I want to get to before we go to the dumb deal of the day, having gone slightly long today, but I think with uh, good reason, um... Another reason not to bank here from the uh, Financial Times. I lost the article. I love when pages refresh for no reason. This is why you never want to put your money in a bank. Greek banks prepare plan. And what's the plan? What's the, what's the great plan they have for you? To limit how much money you can take out of the bank. Isn't that amazing? Don't you think that's absolutely astounding? They're going to authorize taking the deposits of the people. They're going to raid the deposits of the people in order to avert a collapse. Do you know what that means? That means the money that they put in the bank, if you've got $100,000 in the bank and that's what you're gonna retire on, maybe they'll take $10,000 of it for the good of the country. It, because they made bad deals, the average person on the street has to pay for it. And don't tell me it can't happen in America. The same people that are going to tell me it won't happen in America are the same people that told me that Cyprus was a one-time affair and that Poland, no, that, 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 was a, that was a fluke. Well, now we got three flukes in Greece, and Greece is bigger. It's going to be happening in Spain. Spain's having a nightmare. Spain owes a lot more than uh, Greece does. 
Uh, do you know Germany owns uh, owes more than Greece does, and yet Germany is preaching to them? Do you realize that Gr Germany owes more? So that's 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 your Greece Greek update, friends. That's why you do not want to keep your damn money in a bank. How do you get around that? Go to themediaspeaks.com and look up how to live without banks, where I spell out quite easily how to live without banks. I do it every day. And if you do have to have a bank account, you don't have to leave any money in it. And I explain that too. And friends, that brings us to the Dumdy of the day. Unfortunately, the Dumdy of the day is unbelievably close to my house. I actually own property that I hope to rent once I get the place fixed up in this city, Alliance, Ohio. USA Today, woman arrested for calling 911 about bad Chinese food. When I say that we live in a world of stupid, I'm talking about this bonehead. 44-year-old woman was arrested Monday after calling 911 to report Chinese food that was not up to par for her liking, according to police. The genius, she looks here like a, like a, a real Einstein, Tracy McLeod of Alliance placed the call to the emergency number from inside the Main Moon Chinese restaurant. Now, I've never eaten at the Main Moon in Alliance, but I can tell you this. The Main Moon that's on 30th Street is absolutely delicious. So this woman's a nutcase. I'll give a shout out to Main Moon. Hat tip, free uh, plug, delicious food. The call did not qualify as an emergency, and she was arrested and charged with misuse of 911, which is a misdemeanor, said police. Thing is, she dumbass may not have even known any better. Alliance police are reminding residents that misuse or abuse of the system can delay dispatchers from taking calls from people who are having real emergencies. And she's going to appear in court. <sighs> Guys, maybe our country is already so far gone that there's no hope. Maybe maybe we simply are that stupid and that uh, that de 